Welcome. Great. Here we go. Uh, I'm Brian. This is Baratunde. This is Baratunde. Yes, it sure is. Uh, and we're going to do episode two here of Behind the Back Page, yes. uh, the monthly segment in which we chat a little bit about what you wrote in that issue and of you try Mass to do Company. Some gotcha journalism type. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, and so, but this month is a particularly special month because you are not on the back page. No. Well, are you also on the back page? Actually, I am. So you're on you're on a couple pages. It's like a sandwich. Yeah, it's like a bear sandwich. Me. But yeah. you are also on the front page yeah. of Fast Company. And just today, Monday, June, whatever it is, sixteenth, uh, uh, the article went live. Yeah, unplugged. And yeah. unplugged. Yes. So I guess for starters, like just what is the article? Why yes. are, why the hell are you on the cover? Why the hell am I on the cover? Company? That's a great question. I'm asking myself that. I had a very crazy 2012 which you were a part of mm -hmm. uh, in terms of setting up this company, left the Onion, started the company, put out a book, toured heavily, and I've been connected forever. I was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. and by the end of the year, I just didn't want to have much to do with people mm -hmm. and with uh, obligations or work. I needed a vacation. That's not an unusual request. But for me, it was difficult because what I needed a vacation from was a lot of digital noise and interaction. So I took a 25-day break from all Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, every social media tool, and email, and work. And I chilled. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Brooklyn, got a nice little Airbnb spot to really feel the moment uh, of a place that was much nicer than any place that I've ever lived. And, uh, and I called it this sort of digital detox experiment. Coming out of it, I was so moved by the experience, and I was very happy about it. I pitched Fast Company on writing a piece that was not just a column, but a larger piece. Yeah. And they went for it, and as we went through the editing process, it became clear to both of us this was actually a bigger piece, so they made space for it, it ended up being on the cover, and that's why we're talking right now. Great. As opposed to the other times we talk, which is not Right, this. not at all for this reason. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, so you went total detox. Did you ever, like, was there ever a moment, even on an accident, yeah. that you, like, accidentally plugged in? So a here's, a second? here's, what, sort of, okay. but not exactly, <laughs> and so when I say sort of, you have to understand, I created my own rules. Mm -hmm. I wasn't off the whole internet. Right. So you could two, still look half, up please. something for maps. Yeah, or I could like map myself. Okay. I could buy tickets to movies right, online. Right, right. I searched for things on Google. It was about it was like communication and people. Social and interaction online. Gotcha. I cut that. I allowed myself to use the phone for voice okay. and for one-on-one -on -one text, text messaging. Okay. So what happened um, from an internal compulsion, I, I like to share articles. Right. And I was even not consuming a lot of news because uh -huh. the Sandy Hook had just happened. I didn't really. You're probably wanna... getting a lot of your news through Twitter. And yeah, so I didn't Anyways, know as much. Up, I was right. dumber. Mm -hmm. uh, I was much more ignorant. Lesson, lesson number one: <laughs> you're gonna get dumb. I got a lot yeah. dumber, and it felt amazing. Yeah, I like this is what it's like. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> to be dumb, <laughs> to just not know stuff, not be obsessed right, with info right, all right. the time. So I didn't know as much, and that was okay. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised. I I, would, I didn't feel compelled to know stuff, but I would read the New York Times app. Right, basically. and I felt. I want to share this. Mm. Normally, I would post it on Twitter. Yeah. Hey, everybody, check it out. <laughs> yeah. I was only allowed to text, so I would text a few people this link. Mm -hmm. And there was one friend, my friend Anand, who you yeah. also know, and he said, like, you're really pushing the bounds of SMS, because <laughs> I texted him, like, five articles in four days. Right. And he's like, I get it. You're not right. online. <laughs> but I couldn't email it to him. So that was one break. The other was I had a back door. Mm. And I had my chief of staff, Julia, who helps manage right. my complex life, she was kind of on lookout in, in my inbox, and she would call if there were some kind of emergency okay. breakthrough. So, like, I had a friend with a family emergency, mm. and she had sent an email, and Julia thought I should see it. Okay. So we created a little Evernote. Sure. That I, she could tell me to look at it, and so I would look at it. So she even transferred that, though? Yeah, so because I, like, yeah, didn't want, didn't if I got into gotcha. the inbox, it'd be, I'd be done mm -hmm. for. It'd be done for. And then the third case was a Facebook security situation yeah. where people were trying to, like, hack into my account. And I got these it's notifications. The happens, yeah, yeah, just like happens on right. Facebook. And they're like, oh, it looks like you tried to change yeah, your password. So you had to, you had to, clearly, I didn't. And you had Julia take I care of it. I right? gave her my credentials. Gotcha. Uh, so it looked like I logged in. What do you? What was like the biggest test? So, so if those were sort of accident or like uh, yeah. outside circumstances that forced it, was what was the moment or what was the sort of instances in which you most? I mean, was it sharing news? I guess and it was that, the news thing because I wasn't. I was actually shocked at how easy it was once I was in it. Mm -hmm. No one thought I could do it. Yeah. Friends took money against me, <laughs> right? The people I thought I loved and trusted, and I learned that I did not and should not. Um, <laughs> they were like, you can't do this. We have no faith yeah. in you as a human and with discipline. So I was shocked even the first day. I was like, oh, this is not as hard as I thought. It was later on when I tried to share these articles. 
I felt a little social about that. I felt a little disconnected from the news. Mm -hmm. I knew that that was okay temporarily, but I couldn't live yeah. with that much ignorance. Like, I just have to know more stuff to feel complete in some way. And uh, the hardest part was actually giving into it. Mm. It was the mechanics of unplugging. Oh, I see. Yeah. Being unplugged was not nearly as annoying as, as getting thing. unplugged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's just because these tools are really set up to get you in, but not really let you go. So now that, so, so coming out of it then, I mean, obviously a big part of this article is, is just about what the perspective you gained from it. Yeah. What would you say is like one of the more common behaviors or apps or just, you know, anything that you sort of came back to maybe sort of like, this is pointless or yeah. I don't need that. Was there, was there anything that you sort of eliminated after this? I, for a while I eliminated a lot. Even when I came back, I didn't plug things back in. Mm -hmm. So notifications... I've kept, I don't get notified when someone mentions me on Twitter anymore. I don't get pop-ups for emails. Yeah. I left all that off. Texts, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that I didn't come back to. I don't take pictures of my food yeah, and share it anymore. That's like, done? That was done. That's I, good. That there was a never whole started. business called yeah. food spotting. I don't, uh, I'm done. Yeah, okay. That's ridiculous. All right. And I'm good with that. Like, yeah. And I wish them success, but I don't have to be a part of it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, this changed a lot of behavior. I mean, it feels, it seems like, and, and some of it's stuck. I mean, it, clearly in the moment, it, it oh, changed it's everything. Oh, in the moment, yeah. Yeah, and some of it's stuck, though, and so it's lingered on yeah. post that. And it, it's obviously a lot of those behaviors that change are probably things that are directly tied to these apps. So it's it's how you share news or read news or consume news. It's how you communicate with friends. So is there any spaces, does it seep out into those sort of, like, other realms, you know, where for behaviors maybe, like, exercise or eating or these sort of things where they're not so tied to your phone or social media, but you somehow gain a different perspective on that element of life? So what I, I guess I'm, it's, it'll sound a little cheesy, but I think I gained a little more perspective on just the living part of life. Mm -hmm. I was one who shared a lot broadly. Yeah. And I still share a lot. It's not going to stop. I do much more targeted sharing. I send much more intentional emails. You should check this out because... I thought of you in this way, right. that's for you. As opposed to, hey, everybody, here's something mm -hmm. that maybe one of you is interested in. So that shifted. I also really tried during times out, like actual conversations, mm -hmm. meetings, movies, dinner with friends, to just keep the phone away. Interesting. Because it's a, such a strong temptation. And, sure. and someone even on Twitter today commented, why don't you just have better discipline? Like, why is this? Yeah. These are, you have a choice. Just choose a different behavior. Yeah. And... I'm not representative of everyone, sure. but neither is that position. Sure. And I think we've created a world of compulsion mm -hmm. where this is not only really addictive, and there's a level of feedback that comes with it, like love hearts. People heart <laughs> your stuff on Instagram. Like it's digital love, man. Right. And like people like you in a specific <laughs> quantifiable way. Yeah. Um, and we are expected to professionally be really engaged. We're told you have to be always on right. and very responsive. So it's not just like I like sharing stuff like the world rewards this and this a level of accountability and success in, in that realm so I had to put some boundaries artificially in place mm -hmm. to help maintain that and I try even in those conversational moments to be like I'm gonna listen to you right now right. as opposed to like yeah I'm listening uh-huh you're not you How badly do you want to be looking at your phone right now? I, um, I'm pinching myself. Okay. Just, yeah, out like, of frame. just out of frame. I have a knife <laughs> right. in my so knee. So that helps and I'm too. I'm twisting it. Right. <laughs> and so the pain is distracting me okay. from actually checking my messages right now. That's a good, I guess that, so is that recommended? You behavior? carry yeah. just a tiny just knife. If it's too big, you cut an artery. It's sure, you don't want to put yourself in any sort of real yeah. physical hate. So you take like, maybe a push pin. Yeah. But sterilize it. Mm -hmm. Infection, of course, again, yeah. very yeah. distracting. Don't want anything more less. you're again. offline, right. for real. So where are you, I mean, I know where you are right now. <laughs> you're right here. Yes, next to you. And I'm here too. Yeah. Uh, but where do you stand in terms of like your, your sort of, your social internet, like yeah. this whole, like where, where have you find yourself, you're kind of like inching back to levels pre- There's definitely, or, I think of it as a gravitational pull. Yeah. Right, so I, I was, I flung away from the planet for right. a while. Like all the way out, no gravity. No, yeah, and I'm yeah. just floating in space, mm -hmm. and it was great to float in space. Yeah. But I am a part of this, like, planetary sure. system. <laughs> I'm just going to run this metaphor. Yeah, go, no, go for it, yeah. And, and so what I'm saying is the orbital path. Right. right? And then you take the moon <laughs> into account. Right. And you got asteroids and so, like, oh, these unexpected and other cats. satellites that you right. can run into uh -huh. <laughs> when you're trying to re-enter <laughs> the atmosphere. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I, I quantitatively, I can see in my known numbers sure. I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. But I also, I force some breaks in. So one yeah. week, a quarter, roughly. I don't add any meetings. Like, meetings yeah. is a big part of this. 
that are not directly work related to what we're doing. Right, right. Um, which eliminates a ton of stuff. Roughly one day a week, really more like every other week, I just take a day where I mostly don't use these tools. And I don't try to share a yeah. bunch of stuff. And then, like I said, in the very little moments. So I don't, I'm not like anti-tech, yeah. obviously. Sure, no. You know, but I gained, uh, a lot of good came from this sure. floating out in space. Creatively, mm-hmm. some good came from it. I deepened some friendship, probably lost a few. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, you know, it's all right. It's part of that's part of being in space, man. Exactly. Lost in space. Now we're getting sued. Yep. <laughs> well, oh, by the way, we're in Cannes, France. I just wanted. To oh yeah, we're in, we're in France. What? <laughs> Unplugged. But on that note, yeah, thank you thank for you. doing that. I thank guess I will shake your yeah, hand. Yeah, that, like that's why we're gonna do this <laughs> every time. Every <laughs> through a Google Hangout. We'll put our hands up. We'll hand up feature. We'll on the screen like we're visiting each other in prison. Okay. Take care. Thank you.